Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Hey everyone and welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. Uh, Today's Wednesday, um, my show day, I love doing my show. How is everyone doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, For those who are um, in the path of the hurricane, um, I hope that you guys are faring well. I'm in South Florida, so we're about 500, I'm about 500 miles from where the hurricane made landfall. And those things are no joke. I've been through a few of them now living, growing up here in Florida. So um, I hope everybody stays safe and is faring well. And um, maybe collectively we could all say a little prayer to everyone who is experiencing that. It's uh, not fun, I can tell you that. They are not fun. But... We, you know, the show still goes on down here, so we have a great show today, and we're going to lift our vibes, so that's really cool. I have Lightworker, who amplifies the energy of energy practitioners, J.J. D. Geronimo, and she's going to join me in just a few minutes, and she's done a lot of stuff, so when you guys meet her, she gets to tell us all the stuff that she does, which is really cool. Um, to all my regulars who listen uh, to me each week and keep coming back, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It means a lot that you keep tuning into my show and that you're enjoying it. Um, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that you keep returning, just so you know, if you are listening live today. Um, we do always replay the show, so you can always find the replay in the archives. And also, I put the show up on uh, my podcast on postcards to the universe.com. So, there's always a way to find and listen to shows. Okay, so a little about me I am an author, I'm a photographer, I find art background. That's really where where my love is photography and I created a book and it's called postcards to the universe harness the universe's power and manifest your dreams and I talk about manifesting in the book and I had people create a manifesting postcard which is kind of like a little mini vision board a lot of people know what vision boards are so I have people create a postcard about something they want to bring into their life then they send me the postcard And I photograph it, and when their manifestation becomes their reality, we share their stories. And that's basically what the book is about in a nutshell. So there's 30 stories and manifesting postcards in the book, along with exercises on how to manifest in love and money and health, career, so much. And I have all these writing exercises and all these tips and fun little manifesting games that you can play in the book. So if you're interested, you know, check it out. You can find it at Barnes and Noble, Amazon.com. And I've decided, so the book came out at the very end of 2019, right before COVID hit. So um, it's been a few years now, but what I decided to do is I'm going to start doing live readings from my book. So you're going to see that on all my social medias, and I've actually already pre-recorded a few. So I think I'm going to release the first one. No, I'm going to say it because that's going to make me do it because I'm holding myself accountable. I'm going to release the fir- <laughs> at least the first one tomorrow. So if you go on any of my social media, um, so, um, Instagram, I'm on TikTok now, um, you're going to find a reading, me start reading from the book. So I hope to see you over there. And each week I ask people to send me a manifesting postcard. If you don't know how to do that or what I'm talking about, if you go to postcardstotheuniverse.com, I tell you exactly how to create a manifesting postcard and where to send it. The address is listed on there. And if you sign up for Join My Movement, you get a free gift in the newsletter. And it also tells you, gets in a little bit more depth about creating a manifesting postcard. So yeah, I hope that you're interested. Okay, so um, I started this 
I don't know, it's been like over a month now. I'm doing a workshop on Thursday evenings, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's called Manifesting Through Gratitude, A Visual Journey. And it's a workshop that's going to be on going on a continuous basis. It runs from start to finish, five weeks. And it's from the comfort of your home because I have found the quickest, uh, most powerful way to manifesting is by using gratitude. Sometimes we take for granted the things we already have in our life. So we're going to really tap into the energy of gratitude and how that can create so much more abundance in our lives. So we're going to focus them down each week. Week week one focuses on worthiness and self-love. Week two covers health and wellness. Week three looks at our money story and our financial abundance. And week four, we go into our personal relationships, romantic, family, friends, um, coworkers. And there's going to be a Q&A at the end of each class. But the final week is going to be a personal check-in. We're going to be sharing our experiences and doing an open Q&A. So I hope that that sparks your interest because... I'm telling you, it's so powerful. It really, really is in manifesting those things that we want. So what makes it my workshop a little bit different with gratitude is, is since I'm a photographer, I am going to help instruct you how to use your camera phone as one of the tools in um, manifesting. So we're going to be using our camera phones. I have everybody make a manifesting postcard each week in that specific area that we're working on. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun. It's an intimate group. We cap the class at 20. So it's going to be a really, really cool thing. So I hope that this is sparking your interest. And you can also find out more information on my website, postcardstotheuniverse.com. But if you go to finduniquelyyou, with the letter u.com, Melissa Caprio, that is where the workshop is being hosted. But of course, you can get there through, you can get to everything through my website. So I hope that you're interested and you're going to have a beautiful visual gratitude journal at the end of this course. All right. Okay. Uh, I also share a magical message. It's either an affirmation that I like or a postcard somebody sent in. It's an image that I photograph and I love love affirmations. I use them on the daily. I think they're very powerful also. Another powerful way to using the law of attraction. So this week's message is be love. I mean, one of the best ways to have more love in your life is to be more loving. So be what it is that you want to manifest. So if you want love, be love. Be present love everywhere you go and just watch. You'll be amazed at how things will shift in your life. Okay. So now I'm excited to talk to my guest, JJ D. Geronimo. She is the president of Tech Savvy Women, is one of the most highly regarded speakers, authors, and executive strategists to attract, retain, and ad- and advance professional women. She's navigated her way from entry-level positions to top-level leadership roles within leading technology companies, and now she shares her strategies and insights that helped her accelerate her career with her audiences. As a featured columnist for Smart Business Magazine and Thrive Global, JJ has been quoted in numerous publications, including Forbes, The Wall Street Journal, Fox Business, The Glass Hammer, and Working Women Magazine. She shares her insights and discoveries with many corporations and women's organizations across the nation, tapping into her experience to forge a meaningful connection with every audience. So if you're asking yourself, what is this all for, or now what, or is there more, then you're ready to embark on your next step of self-discovery. J.J. G. Geronimo knows these feelings all too well, and in her book, Seeking, 74 Key Findings to Raise Your Energy, Sidestep Your Self-Doubts, and Align with Your Life's Work, J.J. unpacks the strategies that helped her infuse more purpose and meaning into her work and life. With short chapters, relevant stories, and specific questions, these pages create a space where you too can elevate your choices, dig through your stories, embrace your gifts, and elevate your energy. 
For more, you can go to her website, which I'm going to spell out for you since we're on radio, so you can check her out while you're listening. If you go to jjdigeronimo.com, you can find out more about JJ. Welcome, JJ. Thanks so much for being here with me today. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for the invitation. I'm excited. You do a lot. You really, really do. I love what you're doing, especially helping women. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you, and you can let us know how you kind of got into this work and what inspired you to want to do this, to help out other women especially. I mean, I know you help everybody, but I know your focus is with women. So what made you decide to get into this kind of work? Well, like many of us, when you go through things yourself, you want to find your tribe. You want (laughs) to get the best practices. So everything that I do is really out of my own desire to continue to enhance my journey and to really, really create a life I love. Mm. It's so important. It's so important to be finding something to do that where you feel some joy in your life. Now, it doesn't always have to be a career. We know that, but you still want to tap into that. I call it the creative energy, you know, where you get to do something that you enjoy that you can share with other people. So what's your work oh. like about? Yeah, I think that's a great point. And, you know, the book Seeking was actually supposed to be named off the side of her desk because many of us do things off the side of our desk that really fill us up. But mm-hmm. often we don't know how to monetize it or really make it our main thing. And sometimes, you know, it really is a training ground for what is ahead. So if I look back on my life, you know, there were many milestones and key intersection points in my life that I think have brought me to the point I'm at right now. And I think for many of us, we realize that the journey, as many people say, as corny as it is, You know, the journey has a lot to offer us. If we're always focused on the destination, sometimes we miss our biggest lessons or the most beautiful opportunities. Oh, my God. You know, that's funny that you you said that because there's this happens um, quite a lot. So if you're in process of creating something, whatever it is, right, and you're like talking about going through the journey, and then what happens is is you get what it is that you've created, right? Then there's almost this, a lot of people have, have told me that this has happened to them, then there's almost this, now what? I got it. Now what do I do? Like the, the, the going for it sort of feeds you and now you've, you've achieved it and you're like, okay, so there's almost like a little bit of a letdown, like, okay, so now what do I do with myself, right? I achieved that big thing that I wanted. What would you say to that? Well, I think for many of us, we don't, you know, <laughs> you know, I think we don't often know where our life is going to take us. And if we right. have situations that we like, oh, I should have done this, or I should have done that. I think trust that the universe has your back and that you are perfectly orchestrated where you're supposed to be right now. And maybe shift your focus on what is the lesson I need to learn in this part of my life? Yeah. Do you ask yourself a lot of questions like that? Are you? uh... Oh, my gosh. The book seeking is full of questions. Almost the workbook is, you know, almost half the size of the book because it's, you know, the stories I share in the book are really how I got to move through my life where I could clear out some stuff that was no, no longer serving me because I got to a point where I was overworked, overcommitted. Mm-hmm. I had so little joy and I still was so dang busy that I, I wasn't really leaning into what was calling me. In fact, I was leaning into what I thought I should be doing. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of us do that. I definitely believe a lot of us do. We we have that, oh, I should do this, I should do this, running in the background. Um, I know you um, talk a lot about being a successful businesswoman and working with other successful women, but you also call yourself, which I thought was really interesting, a light worker. So what do you mm. mean when you say that you're a light worker? Mm, That's a great question. I've been on this journey for a long time, and this is my third book, and I've been really ushering people through. You know, my first book is really about women with young children with demanding responsibilities or a demanding job and how to maneuver that landscape without losing yourself. 
My second book is about how do you get promoted? How do you get invited to a board? How do you get to that executive suite? And through each of those books, I really had to dig deep into who I am, like, what do I believe in? How did it manifest for me? And what are the lessons that I learned? And then in 2016, I was like, oh my gosh, I've hit all these milestones I thought I was going to get to. And I'm not feeling what I thought I would feel. I'm not Mm. really enjoying the life I created. (laughs) Right. (laughs) <laughs> and then, of course, it, you know, a lot of things started happening, right, within my family, oh. my parents, my work. Like, things just started crumbling around me. And I was like, what is going on? It was like things were falling through my fingers. And I think it was kind of the universe's way of saying, yeah, we're going to rock your world right now because you need to shift lanes. And you're not going to do it on your own unless we rock your world. And so I had to kind of sit there and be like, okay, who am I really? And what am I really supposed to be working on? Because what I thought I was supposed to be running towards really didn't bring me the fruitfulness or even the joy Mm -hmm. or experience or momentum I thought it was going to be. And that happened back in 2016. And so I really take readers through a journey of like how I worked from the inside out, which was Mm -hmm. a totally new concept for me. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, because we're always taught to work from the outside in, but it's really, that's when all the real changes happen, is you do the inner work, and then it, and then it manifests on the outside, right? So that's, that's what you really have to figure out, like, what is it that is sparking you? What is it that you want to go, where do you want to go, and what is it that you want to do? And I know you, um, you know, you have some things that you like to talk about. You talk about mindfulness and using mindfulness as a superpower. And what do you mean, like, mindfulness? Because I I know a lot of people hear the word, it's a buzzword, but they might not really know exactly what it is that you mean by that. Yes, and I think it's important to talk a little bit about, like, I had to do a lot of things to work through the stories that were holding me back. Mm -hmm. The self-doubt that popped up all the time that really kind of drove a lot of my decisions and just really how I moved through life. And I realized I was obviously, you know, in my work profession, things were going well, but I I really beat myself up a lot and I kind Mm -hmm. of beat other people up a lot, whether I said it or not. And I Mm -hmm. even was so hard on myself that I really started stifled myself in a lot of ways. And the energy work that I did, the self-discovery, the solo trip, the experience with different energy practitioners allowed me to move a lot of that heavier energy out of my body and create room for light and love. And one of the most instrumental things that I learned is Mm -hmm. mindfulness. And mindfulness was not something I was running towards, if I was totally honest. Like, mindfulness seemed to me like, oh, God, that's such a ridiculous mm-hmm. thing to do, you know? <laughs> and it took Yeah, it's too woo-woo, classes. right? Like, oh, there goes those woo-woo people, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be productive. I wanted to, you know, really kind of get things done all the time. And my mindfulness teacher was just not having it. She was like, JJ, you have to put the notebook away. I'm like, no, I might have a good thought or I got to plan my grocery list. Or right. And it, it took me weeks to realize that I was basically living in the future or reflecting mm-hmm. on the past. I was not in the present moment. And yeah. mindfulness really taught me how to be in that present moment. Oh my God. No, it's, I think most of us are there. We're either like thinking about everything that we have to do or going over everything that we've already experienced. Right? We, we, yeah. We're not very, we're not present very often. So what does your mindfulness practice look like? Do you have a daily practice? Oh, okay. I just, I've thought about myself in the last eight years. You know, I really, I really had a lot of work to do because I was, so leaning in the masculine energy. I was so driven. And it took me a long time to unwind that. You know, I'm 50 now. So I've been working in that energy and that like productivity rat mm-hmm. race for so long. And all of us have masculine and feminine energy. But when you're in high tech, which I was, or many demanding careers, you lean so far in the masculine that you completely detach yourself from your knowing, your connection, and, and your mm-hmm. inner wisdom. Oh, God. 
Yeah, I mean, totally. But what, like, do you do a meditation? Do you do, like, a grounding, a, a breathing exercise? Like, like what's, see, because mindfulness can be very difficult for some people whose mind, you know, goes in a million directions. So mm-hmm. I like to give people who practice it, like, what it is that they do that helps them get into that present moment. I love that. So one of my biggest one of the easiest things I do, just to remind mm-hmm. myself how easy it really is, mm-hmm. is I either look out my window or I go outside and I find 20 things, recognize 20 things. And not just things I see, but things I hear, mm-hmm. smell, feel. And I, I really put myself in the present moment outside or even if I have to just look outside, right? I just really just put myself in the present moment. And it's amazing because when you are in the present moment and you're just recognizing everything that's happening around you, it's mm-hmm. hard to be worried. It's hard to be fearful. It's hard to have anxiety because you're in the present moment. There's, you're not thinking about what you already did or what you're leaning into next. And so that's the first thing that I do that's obviously super easy. Oh, yeah. That's, actually, that is really easy. To just Super go outside easy. and look around and say, oh, there's that, you know, here, here it would be, there's the lizard that I see, <laughs> there's the palm right. trees, you know, but just like hearing the wind blowing through the trees because it really does, it forces you to be present. And that's, um, that's actually a very good, and I never even thought about it before, but that is a very good and easy way to get right into the present moment is to just get out of your office or your home, go outside for a few minutes and just experience what everything that you see, smell, hear around you. Yeah, that is, that's a really good tip. I think something easy for for us. Yeah, it's super easy. You, you mentioned something before you said that you were super hard on yourself and that if you had to be honest, you were hard on other people. Um, a perfectionist, were you a perfectionist? Would you consider yourself Mm. that? Yes, I did. And I pride myself on that too. But you know, I have a whole chapter, as you know, in the book that says, mm-hmm. you know, the trap of perfectionism. Because yeah. it is a trap. It is very much a trap. And the trap is pretty insightful when you start to learn, like, how much you lean on that to tell people who you are. Why do you think that? I mean, you said you're like that with other people. And do you mean other people that you like your, your coworkers, your friends, your family relationships, you sort of have that same energy, energy with them. Like you, you expected them to be perfect in certain situations. You think a lot of us are like that. I know a lot of us are, are like that with ourselves, but I'm trying to think about with others. Well, it's not necessarily that you force your perfectionism on others. When Mm -hmm. I talk about, I was hard on others. Mm -hmm. You know, the way I beat myself up inside, I often carried that over to others and whether I said it out loud or not. So like if the coffee machine was empty, I'm like, who the heck would not make coffee when they took the last cup? Uh, Or I can't believe you cut me off. Or I can't believe the bank doors closed even with a minute to go. Like I was mm -hmm. actually a victim in my life in a lot of ways. And it really took me a lot of unwinding to mm-hmm. realize that life was happening for me. Yeah, I have said that before. We always think life is happening to us and, and haven't switched over to looking at things as life is happening for us. I could see that now the way that you just said it. Like, yeah, I, I, I have to admit that I've done that myself. <laughs> I've I've done that myself. You know, I don't really think about it as, I never really thought about it as much as um, uh, being hard on others or other situations. I always looked at it as not having patience, but maybe that's just another way of saying the same thing, Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so with the, yeah, and with the mindfulness, what I had to do is I really had to teach myself how to have gratitude, and gratitude is not about the great trip. Well, it could be about the great trip, right. the promotion, the extra bonus. Right. But gratitude is about, how, you know, the smallest things in your life, too. And mm-hmm. if you can find nothing to be gratit- have gratitude for, that is exactly where you need to start. So gratitude for your legs, gas in mm-hmm. your car, money for lunch, or wherever you're starting from. Because your, 
your frequency, from what I've learned, or your energy, your mm-hmm. level of energy, which I call frequency, uh, which I can go into later, but your energy attracts similar energy. And so mm-hmm. if you are swimming in the mud puddle, which I have been there, you are going to attract other people in the mud puddle. Mm-hmm. No, that's why I created the course, because I've learned that. And that's what I want to... Um, the workshop. I mean, that's what I wanted to, that's why I want to do that with other people and help them tap into it because it is just looking around our environment and what's already in our environment, the small things, the people in our environment, the experiences that we have on the daily basis that we take for granted. And once we tap into that, the shift is phenomenal. It's, it's Mm. unbelievable how it shifts and I energy frequency. Exactly. So yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that about gratitude because, you know, you're right. Yes, of course. Oh, I'm so grateful I just had that wonderful vacation. Yes, it is that too. But is it, I'm so grateful that when I open up my refrigerator, I can feed myself, feed myself mm-hmm. well. You know, we take those mm-hmm. things for granted, right? We do. Because it's just in our everyday environment and many people don't have a lot of the things that you have or I have. So it's, it's time that we utilize that and really tap into it because it does change your frequency. It totally shifts your vibration. And you do, you bring more things on, on, on level of frequency or energy into your life. So that's, that was my thought process because I've been working with gratitude for years on what I wanted to create. Okay, so let's hold our thought right now because we'll talk more about this and so much other stuff that you're doing. Let's take our break here. We'll come back in just a few minutes and then we'll jump right back in. So guys, stay tuned and be back in just a few minutes. Everyone has a story. I have a story. You have a story. We all have a story. As I see it, you have three choices. Allow your story to define you, use it to excuse you, or utilize it as a method to empower you. It's your life. You have the power. You choose. Rewrite your story on finduniquelyyou.com. Hi. I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. Hey, and welcome back. If you're just joining me, I have author JJD Geronimo with me today, and We are talking about, you know, raising our frequency and tapping into abundant energy. And her book is titled Seeking 74 Key Findings to Raise Your Energy, Sidestep Your Self-Doubts, and Align with Your Life's Work. So, JJ, um, how would you define your life's work? Mm, This is a great question. And you know, I've been doing a lot of work on this because I've had the mm-hmm. opportunity to do a lot of different things. And I wouldn't say that any one thing is my life's work, mm-hmm. but all the things that I've been touching, all the things that I've been creating, create a thread for us to move through the different experiences that we create. And as we raise our frequency, as we gain the lessons, new work comes to us. And I feel like now with all this research, Mm-hmm. of these three books and all this self-work that I've had to do to really figure out who I am and sort of why am I here on the planet? 
I have learned that it, that your life's work is an evolution of things that you focus your energy and attention on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it has to, you have to do the work like we touched on earlier because, you know, when, when you're listening to somebody, like people who are listening to our show right now, right, they want to hear from somebody who's gone through it and has done the work, you know, to help guide them if they're stuck, right? You know, mm-hmm. you don't want to hear from somebody who... <laughs> You know, no offense, but somebody who's all bright and shiny and everything's always been perfect and given to them and has done no work trying to say that, oh, well, I can help you with this. And you're like, well, mm-hmm. have you been through the, the, you know, the mess? And they're like, no, I haven't, but I know what I'm talking about. No, you want to talk to somebody who's like, I have been in the trenches. I have done mm-hmm. the work. I have experienced the pain. I've had to go through it. I know what I'm talking about, right? So... You know, so many of us have so much um, negative, um, a negative loop, like I'm trying to think about the right word I'm using for it, like a negative loop in our head of self-doubt, of Mm -hmm. self-doubt, of Mm self-doubt. And I know you talk a lot about self-doubt. So how do we go and move through that? You know, coming Mm. from somebody who's had it herself and has done the work. Oh my gosh, I had as much, I mean, I had self-doubt today, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> not even like last week or, you know, two years right. ago, it was like today. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to spend a lot of time with women's groups. I, I've been in a lot of different rooms around the country and also globally mm-hmm. online. And I will tell you, you can teach, share, provide step-by-step mm-hmm. action steps that get you from point A to point B. But it doesn't matter if you are beating the crap out of yourself on a regular basis. And I talk about even like the experience with my mother and my experience Mm -hmm. with some friends that they talk a long time about what they're going to do, Mm -hmm. but they're still on the side of the pool. They haven't jumped in yet because they don't Mm -hmm. believe they're ready. Right. Well, we do have to be ready, right, to do the, to, to jump, to make the leap. So how can you help anybody listening right now who's thinking, I feel I'm ready, but I'm scared. I don't know, you know, should I do it? Like what, what advice would you offer those listening? Well, I definitely would like to ask you, how ready do you think you need to be? Because research right. shows that most women feel even let's just take a job let's not even okay. talk about something creating something from scratch but let's just talk about either a job in your existing company or okay. a job that you're striving for research shows that most men feel comfortable applying at 40 to 60 percent men okay. uh, women you know women have to apply most women apply at a hundred percent and oh, wow yes yeah, so it's like if you're waiting to be 100% ready for something you've never done before, yeah. you're probably never going to move off the mark. And right. the reality is, is they've done a ton. Of, so I've done a ton of research with women in STEM, and I've mm-hmm. done a lot of work with women in tech. And the National Center for Women in Technology research women that stayed in STEM careers. And the major differentiator is self-efficacy. Mm-hmm. Now, self-efficacy is not something that's that you're born with. Self-efficacy is something that you grow and expand. Self-efficacy is having a vision for where you want to go, which most of us have a vision. But the second part is you have to believe you can achieve it. And you can only grow your self-efficacy bucket. You can only fill it up when you strive before you're 100% ready. So if you're sitting waiting to be 100% ready, Not Mm -hmm. only are you not leaping in the direction you desire, but you're missing the opportunity to fill up your self-efficacy bucket. And so after my own research of doing this, I learned it's not because women are not capable. It's not because women haven't pulled it across the finish line before. It's because how women talk to themselves. And it wasn't until I took these mindfulness classes that I even could understand how I was talking to myself because it creates the mindfulness class I took was eight weeks long, mm-hmm. three hours each class. So 
24 hours I had to take this class and I really didn't even get it until hour 18 because I was so busy trying to mastermind my Mm. participation. Ah, yeah. (laughs) It makes sense. I mean, it really, really does because I could see how women would want to be like, well, I can't, I can't approach that until I feel like, yeah, a hundred percent, I can handle that job. I can handle that move. I can handle that thing. Yeah. I, I, I think as I've gotten older, you know, and had more experience behind me, I've gotten to the point where truthfully, I'm just like, F it. I'm just going to do it. If it works, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I got, cause I don't care as much what other people think of me any longer where I used well, to. Do you see, like, that was also part of why, personally, I held back. Well, what is this so-and-so going to think? What are these people going to think? Now I'm like, what do I think? It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter, and I feel like for many of us, it's, it might be other people for sure, but it's really ourselves because yeah. I have a whole chapter on fears. And, of course, yes. we have fears of snakes, fears of heights, mm-hmm. fears of this, fears of that. But that's not the fears I'm talking about. Right. I'm talking about the fear of looking stupid, the fear right. of being embarrassed, the fear right. of not knowing the answer. Like those are fears that we struggle with every single day. And yes. there's so many times in my life, and I talk about this, where I wanted to do something, but my voice in my head was so strong that I was so afraid of looking ridiculous that I chose yeah. not to lean in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure everyone listening can resonate with that. Now, now you said something men are slightly different in their approach. Now, do men have that same voice that makes them feel, you know, like, oh, I'm afraid to try this because I don't want to look ridiculous or is a stronger component in women? Men also have it. So I did speak mm-hmm. with Pauline and that created the um, self-imposter syndrome. I did mm-hmm. speak with her about it. And men and women have it equally. But women okay. pay a lot more attention to it. Oh. We have a lot more self-doubt than men do in the sense because we are kind of often taught as a young child to kind of stay behind the scenes. Right. And I think for many of us that it can be really daunting depending on what our parents have said to us, depending on how Mm -hmm. our mom showed up in the relationship. It's just, it can be really daunting. And I think for many of us, there's a lot of things we have to work through. And many of those things I've included in the book because I, I'm a three in, in human design. And my three is like, let me go out and try every single thing I could figure out. And then I'm going to bring back the best things that really work to help you too. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. But so for those who want to learn how to work around their self-doubt, what would you recommend? Well, I think first you really need to understand what is your primary stories in your head. What do you, what Mm -hmm. happens if you start to say, I'm going to check this out or I'm going to start this or I'm going to do that. What are, what are the first things you say to yourself? You know, is it, is it, you know, no way, or is it, oh, yes, you can, or is it maybe not now, or let me just Mm -hmm. see what I can do. And I think really monitoring your Mm -hmm. stories is such a critical piece because you're going to have it. And I still have the stories. They come up all Mm -hmm. the time and the the self-doubt comes up all the time. But now because of mindfulness, I actually can compartmentalize that or I can trick myself and be like, let me just see what I can do as Jen Sincero would say. Let me just See what I can do because then yeah. there's not as much pressure yeah. to have it all figured out before you get started. Yes. No, that's really, really good advice. Yeah. Let me just see what I can do. Let me just, yeah. I think that is something good because we do, we all have self doubts and the more you do work on yourself, the more you're going to start to see your stories, whatever story you have about whatever your story about relationships, your story about money. I talk about money stories all the time, your story about your career, your story about your body, right? We tell ourselves these stories and the story is what's leading our lives, (laughs) not the things, not, not what we really want. So it's, good to find out what your story is. And if you have something that keeps coming up for you that you don't like, 
it might be a good time to actually do the work and say, why is this keep coming up? What am I telling myself about this? Right. I'm sure that you've Mm -hmm. discovered so many of those in your work when you started doing the work. Oh, and I had to write them down. And I also work with a lot of energy (laughs) practitioners because for me, energy practitioners are people that help you remove the energy that's not working for you. And through that removal, you find more opportunities to have gratitude, more opportunities Mm -hmm. to raise your energy and be really kind of participate in the evolution of your experience. And I think that's really where the light comes from. When you can take your frequency, if you think of frequency like a radio station, right? FM mm-hmm. radio is frequency modulation. So if you can take your frequency from a 92.5 to a 97.3 or even mm-hmm. a 98.4, that takes a lot of practice and self-discipline to get to that level. But there's a lot mm-hmm. of beauty in that journey and a lot of things you can let go of that are no longer serving you. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Definitely. <laughs> That's everything that, that, that I'm doing. That's why I do the show. That's why I have talked to people who are doing the work that you're doing. And I have so many energy healers on, too, because I love to work with energy healers myself, energy practitioners, because um, I do think that there's a lot of stuff that uh, is self-imposed that keeps us from living the life that we really desire. So, you know, that's why I love to share the messages. So <clears throat> somebody's listening right now and they're thinking, it's time. I got I to gotta do something. I got I to gotta shake up my life. I got to shift some things. I got to make some changes. How, what is the first step? Like, what would you tell somebody? Like, should they seek out a professional? Should they start with, you know, mindfulness practice, just breathing exercises? Like, what would be the first step in moving their life forward? I think for many of us, I mean, this is essentially, like, I wrote the book so that I could basically give people a toolkit to to figure out where to start. So if the chapter's about mothers, your relationship with your mother really calls to Mm -hmm. you, then that's the chapters you should start on. In the book Seeking, if you have money issues where you can't get started because it costs too much money or you don't have the money or right. money just isn't available to get it going, then you should start on Chapter 24. You know, money is a mm-hmm. hurdle for many. Like, you need to sort of open the book and find some of the struggles that you may be experiencing so you can have not only some insight but some tools to start thinking, okay, because... In the appendix, I have included not only all the articles and books, but all of the practitioners I've worked with, all the websites Mm. I've visited, all the just great resources and people in my community that have helped me work through some really challenging times in my life and stories I had to move through. So the appendix Mm. is what people say they love so much because I just put it all out there. I just give every contact that I've ever worked mm. with in, in each chapter so that you too can create the benefits for yourself. Yeah, and you also include questions, which are always great because sometimes we don't know how to name what it is we're feeling or what we want unless it's written out in a question and then it causes us to sit down and think and see what comes out when we, when we answer the question. So you've geared your questions to help guide us in um, making some decisions about some of the things that we need to work on in our lives. Absolutely. And I think for many of us, it's just about having an organized way to kind of figure out how to move forward. I think Mm -hmm. like we all have the ability. And if you're listening right now, I I really find that there are no accidents and -hmm. that there's something in our conversation that is here to guide, help, be a resource for you. And I'm always watching and listening to see what the universe brings across my path. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, how do you handle, um, let's just say a bad day. You wake up and some of the old subconscious programming is running. You're having a really bad day. Things aren't going the way that you had hoped. What, helps you get right back into yourself. Is it the mindfulness practice that you started doing? Well, definitely like having gratitude, but sometimes it's just things are just not going. I mean, I have teenagers and I have a business (laughs) and I do a lot of everything that everyone else does. And so I have triggers often 
Uh, but I have I'm teenagers. With, you know, All you have to say is I have teenagers. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Okay. You no, know, those surly teenagers. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So I, I find that for me, I use my phone as a tool. I have, I follow people on YouTube that have inspiring content. I have mm-hmm. audibles where I have books I listen to and books that I never take off that I could pop into any chapter. I Mm -hmm. have a dog. So going for a walk without my Mm -hmm. phone and finding 20 things is Mm -hmm. often like, okay, life is bigger than me. I will Mm -hmm. move through this. Life is happening for me. What is the lesson? Like I have to talk myself through that because our relationships are often our biggest triggers. Mm -hmm. And so if you're getting triggered by relationships, you know, starting to really think about why are they triggering me? Where, where is this in my body? How did this story start? Because often you'll see repetitive behavior from people when you were growing up to people that are now. So I talked to a woman the other day. She was so upset at work. And she was telling Mm -hmm. me about this person that was driving her bananas. And I was like, who else has driven you crazy like this in your life? And without a beat, she said, my brother. Mm. I said, is it possible that there was a lesson you had to learn with your brother that's not finished and maybe it's coming forward in this coworker? Yeah. No, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a really good point. So what do you do if you have a person who you have to sort of have a relationship with in some shape or form, like your children, let's say, or your parents or your siblings, and they trigger you? What, what kind, how, how to work through that. And you don't want to give up the relationship because we're not talking about abuse or where something is so toxic that sometimes you have to walk away. I'm just talking about the, the triggers, but they really yeah. get under your skin and trigger you. How do you handle that? Well, I'm listening to The Vortex right now by Esther Hicks and Jerry Hicks. Okay. And I have listened is... to that many, many times in the past. It's been a while, but I love that book. What, is, what do they say? So Esther says that everything that is happening outside you is happening inside you. So if somebody is triggering you, Mm -hmm. there is something inside you that you have to work through. So again, what is the lesson? What is the lesson? And this is how I use energy workers. I say, I go to them and I share all my energy workers inside my community. Together we speak. And I, I just share them all because I want everybody to have easy ways to work through their crap that's no longer serving them. And I say, okay, mm-hmm. this, you know, when it, Kathy is someone I work with. Okay, so Kathy, mm-hmm. she's in Cincinnati, and I'll say, Kathy, this is my trigger. Or, you know, there's a woman I work with out of Colorado, and I'm like, okay, how, you know, how, why is this triggering? She does Byron Katie work, so she's, I'm like, why okay. is this triggering me? And I think finding people to help you work through your triggers is so mm-hmm. powerful. Yeah. Yes, because truthfully, <laughs> Excuse me, I'm choking. <clears throat> um, truthfully, you want to work through it because it makes you a happier person inside. And that is the more of us that do that kind of work, the better the world will be, right? Because happy people will be in more joy, gratitude, and, and love. And you want to be around those kind of people. You don't want to be around surly, miserable, angry people all the time. Well, and the reality is, is we need more women at more tables. And so the why I do the work I'm doing is because I'm trying to share my best practices with other people. They are primarily women to say, hey, this is how I started working from the inside out. And my outside changed because I did the work on the inside. And I want women to feel empowered enough to do that work wherever it makes sense to start so that they can lean into what is calling them. If they're supposed to open a farm or they're supposed to be on a board or maybe they're supposed to head the PTO or run for a political office or, you know, maybe start a business. It doesn't matter to me what is calling you, but what I want you to do is I want you to have tools so that you feel strong enough and supported enough to lean into what is calling you. Mm. Oh, we definitely need more women at the table. That is... For sure. Oh my God. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're doing this kind of work and more women are coming to the table. You know, I mean, it, it's happening. We're seeing it happen. Not as fast as I would like, but it is happening. Um, 
What about, Sue, with men? Are you finding more men are interested in doing some of this internal work? I are find they- that men, yeah. I mean, this last week I had an event, a women's event for lawyers, accountants, and financial mm-hmm. women that was organized by men for mm-hmm. the women clients and women in their office. So I feel like men, you know, are, are ready, at, you know, are ready to engage in new ways. Not all men, you know, not all men and not all women either. And right. I always tell women, if you're looking for a sponsor or somebody to kind of help you, look for people that support other people in their life. So whether that's a significant other, their kids, other coworkers, people that report to them, Generally, you know people, you can see people that are supporting other people's journeys. And those are the people you want to work around. Yes, those are the people that you want to work around for sure. And there's so much support out there for all of us. We just have to seek it out and look for it. So I wanted to sh- I wanted you to talk a little bit about this because I have spoken about this in the past and I have learned to do it and it's very powerful and the power of no. What is oh, the power yeah. of no? Because I love it. I love the word no. <laughs> yes. So I have, yeah, I, I have taught myself and consequently taught many, many other people how to sort of think about what you're saying yes to, because your time is one of your most valuable assets. And if you're giving it away so freely because you feel guilty, you think you should, you want to be liked, you're not going to have a lot of time to lean into the work you need to do inside or the work that's calling you. And so I work, I share this chart, the six column chart called the power of no. I share questions, a book chapter from my second book with anybody Mm -hmm. who wants it, that wants to have a more impactful life. And it really starts with where you align your time. God. Saying no has become so freeing. I can't even begin (laughs) to tell people who are listening. It really is. And it's especially hard for people pleasers to say no, right? We know this. So it's, it's a good practice to start saying no more to things that you're not interested in doing. It really is very powerful. Uh, we only have like, I can't even believe it. We only have like a couple of minutes, a few minutes left. So is there something that you want to share that you think is important? Something I didn't get to with you today or didn't get a chance to ask you that you feel that could be a benefit? Well, I would say that, you know, where you are right now is no accident. Whatever you're going through is perfectly orchestrated for you. And if you happen to be listening to our conversation, it's really the universe's way to give you a life jacket to say, hey, we can help you get out of this. You need to do some inside work. You need to understand who you are, what you talk about, where you spend your time and what you're focusing on. So really see this as one of the lessons or tools that the universe is putting across your path right now as a way to kind of move to the next step of your journey. Yes, exactly. You're right. It is no accident if you're coming across this show and you're listening to us today, then that was a message that you needed to hear for some reason. So pay attention to that. So, JJ, the best way for people, if they want to connect with you, or do you work with people one-on-one? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So, I I actually do a lot of live work right inside my community, togetherweseek.online, and then Mm -hmm. uh, I speak at a lot of women's conferences. So, people usually find me there, but I'm getting ready to help women that have books on their heart and on their mind, or maybe they've even written it. I'm getting ready to sort of teach how do you publish an award-winning book. So I'm putting all the details together for that. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, because I, as an author myself, you put a book out there and then what, right? Or maybe you just have an idea and you're like, I need help. Somebody help me put this book together. But what happens once the book is birthed and then you're like, okay, well, <laughs> what am I going to do with it now? How do I get it in front of people? So that's going to be very beneficial. What is the best website or social media that you like people to connect with you on? Mm, well, YouTube, I'm on a lot. I do, I'm starting to do a lot more interviews and videos on YouTube. So that's a great social platform. And then of course, LinkedIn being a businesswoman, and then okay. Instagram. 
perfect. All right, guys, check her out. Thank you so much, JJ. It was such a pleasure having you here with me today. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. And I'm wishing everyone a wonderful week filled with joy, abundance, and love. Stay safe, everybody. Peace.